Hello, my name is Fiona Bache. I'm the urogynecology subspec trainee here at the Women's Hospital, and I'm going to be talking to you about urodynamics. Urodynamics is a test of the function of the lower urinary tract, which means the bladder and urethra, and the way they work together. It is done to investigate urinary incontinence and other dysfunctions of the bladder. It is made up of three main components, which are urophilometry, filling cystometry, and voiding cystometry. Put simply, looking at how the patient weighs, how the bladder reacts to being filled, and then looking at greater details at the pressure generated when a patient wheezes. Urodynamic testing should only be done if it's likely to change the management plan, as it does carry a risk of urinary infection and haematuria. It is not required before conservative and medical treatment for urinary incontinence, but most clinicians would perform them prior to surgical interventions. Other useful information given by urodynamics is to aim to predict side effects of interventions and also to understand if there have been treatment failures. So for the test itself, the patient is asked to attend with a comfortably full bladder and to bring a bladder diary. As you can imagine, people can be very anxious about this test and may be apprehensive about the embarrassment they might feel if they do leak, so it's really important to reassure them that this is essentially the aim of the test and we need to reproduce their symptoms to help treat them. The first part of the test is urophilometry, which is where the patient voids into a special commode which measures volume and flow rate and the computer generates a graph. If it is normal, this should be a smooth bell-shaped curve with a maximum flow rate, Qmax, of over 15 mils per second. However, if the voided volume is less than 200 mils, this may not be accurate. A prolonged or intermittent flow rate with a low Qmax would be abnormal, and this might be to, due to obstructed voiding or detrusor hypocontractility. The second part is filling cystometry, which assesses the storage capabilities of the bladder. A filling catheter and a pressure sensor are inserted into the bladder. Post-void residual is measured, and then this catheter is used to fill the bladder. A pressure sensor is also inserted into the rectum or the vagina, and this measures the intra-abdominal pressure. The detrusor pressure is then calculated by subtracting the abdominal pressure from the intravesical pressure. A real-time graph of these pressures is generated by the software, and this is viewed by the clinician to observe changes in pressure during the test. During the filling phase, first sensation, first desire, and strong desire should be recorded, as well as any additional symptoms of urgency or pain. The bladder is normally filled at a rate of 50 mils per minute to a volume of 500 mils, but the test may be stopped prior to this volume if the patient becomes distressed. Once bladder capacity is reached, the patient is asked to stand in an attempt to reproduce their symptoms as commenced. A tap may be run, or the patient's hands are put into cold water to assess for detrusor overactivity. The patient is then asked to cough, jump, or do whatever movement normally causes them to have a stress incontinence leak. These diagrams show a representation of what happens in each case. This is the filling line, which increases throughout the test. This is the intravesical line, the line which is physically inside of the bladder. And this is the intra-abdominal line, the line which is measuring the intra-abdominal pressure. And the detrusor pressure is this one. Urodynamic stress incontinence is shown here, where there is involuntary loss of urine due to increased intra-abdominal pressure without a detrusor contraction. Detrusor overactivity is shown here, with an involuntary detrusor contraction, which may be spontaneous or provoked, and this may or may not lead to urinary leakage. The final part of the test is voiding cystometry, when the mechanics of micturition are assessed. The filling line is removed, but the two pressure sensors are left in place. The patient returns to the commode and voids as normal. There is simultaneous measurement of pressure and flow to give a pressure flow analysis. This gives an explanation of slow flow as to whether it's from obstruction, perhaps from a kinked urethra due to cystic seal or previous surgery, or it could be due to detrusor hypocontractility. The voided volume is then compared to the volume instilled and the post-void residual is calculated. This completes the test and the findings are discussed with the patient. I hope that this has given you an overview of urodynamics and I hope you enjoyed the video. Mm -hmm.